Hello, and thank you for joining us today in our studies of 2 Samuel. Today we're in 2 Samuel chapter 15, and as we consider chapter 15, we see here in this chapter Absalom's rebellion. Absalom is going to still have those embers uh, in his heart, as it were, over everything that has happened. He never truly gets over uh, what has transpired and the reasons why it transpired. And so now in chapter 15, he's going to take things up a notch. Uh, he is going to actively work to undermine and to take control of the kingdom from his father, David. As we go through and look at some lessons from the chapter this morning, I want us to hone in on a couple of different areas of the response of David, but also one particular detail that is mentioned here in 2 Samuel chapter 15 and verse number 7, and that's where I want us to begin. Because in chapter 15 verse 7, depending on the translation that you're using, you have some translations, including the one that we read from uh, yesterday, that come out and say that it has been 40 years or after 40 years, uh, these things have, take place that Absalom says to the king. And yet that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, that does not seem to fit the overall scheme of things in the way that the scriptures lay things out. So what's going on here with this particular statement? Well, there are two possibilities. First, first of all, and most likely, is that you have actually two different renderings. There are many translations who will state that it is four years, not 40, and that therefore it is a, a difference in the rendering, and there are many of the manuscripts that have that it is four years instead of 40. And four years definitely makes a lot more sense here. Uh, the other option that some have put forth is that this 40 years is actually a reference to the age of Absalom. This is far less likely. And, and so the most likely scenario is that somebody mistranscribed it at some point, and instead of it being listed as four years, it was placed as 40 years. But after four years would make a great deal of sense. Remember, it's going to be about two years from the time that uh, Amnon is going to uh, commit his sin against Tamar to the time that Absalom's going to take his revenge. It's going to be another two years from the time that Absalom kills Amnon or has Amnon killed to the time when David is going to bring him back from his exile. It is then, the indication seems to be, going to be four years before Absalom is truly going to come out and bring his rebellion into public view. But he's going to do it in a very subtle way. What you see in chapter 15 is him going through and gaining the hearts of the people, especially those who are disillusioned and are upset with David. Remember, as they're coming out, he's saying, oh, if only I were the king, I would be just, and I would be fair, and I would give you what you want. You know, the easiest way to foment rebellion against one group is to tell another group that you're going to give them everything that the first group isn't going to give them. And that's exactly what Absalom is going to do. He is going to work in such a way that he is going to give or promise to those around him the things that David will not do. And as such, you have a major issue that is going to begin to build in the people or in the city of Jerusalem and among the people of Israel. Eventually, Absalom is going to ask permission to leave, and David, not knowing the undercurrent of what is going on, gives him that permission. And that leads us into the second level of our discussion this morning, and that is what happens with David's flight from Jerusalem. Absalom is going to leave. He is going to begin to harness people around him and, and to bring people to his side, and David is going to be told 
that Absalom has built a rebellion, but also he's going to be told that the parts of the people are with Absalom, that David has lost the hearts of the people. Now, this is going to be something that hasn't happened for David in a very long period of time. It, it, David has been on the throne for decades now, and David has always had the hearts of the people. Uh, from the time that everything came together after Ishbosheth's death, the people have been rallied behind David, but not anymore. And so David is going to do the one thing that he can do to protect himself and to protect his family and those that he's close to and those that are loyal to him. He is going to leave Jerusalem. And he is going to do as he did in the days of Saul, and he's going to go out into the wilderness, as it were. There are going to be a number that are going to go with him. That There are going to be some that are going to go with him, even though he doesn't want them to go with them. He, he's not asking them to go with him. He appreciates their loyalty and he appreciates their devotion, but he does not want to put anybody else in any more danger or on the wrong side of things than he has to. And yet he is going to leave Jerusalem. He is going to flee. He is going to be defeated in this instance. And, and yet David's flight is going to be with the mindset that God will do as he sees fit. And that's really going to be David's attitude, is that it will come about as the Lord desires. And that if the Lord wants him to reign, then he will reign. If the Lord says it's time for somebody else to take the throne, then somebody else is going to take the throne. He leaves it in the hands of the Lord. But he is not going to just turn tail and run without setting up informants and without putting in place a means of being able to know what it is that's going to take place. And so you're going to see David's spy ring come into existence. It is going to be set at the forefront with the priests, with those who are going to have the Ark of the Covenant, those who are going to be bringing about the offerings, and he is going to put in place through uh, Zadok and Abiathar, the priests, a, a, a means of being able to get information of what Absalom is doing in Jerusalem. And he is also going to send one of his trusted advisors, Hushai, and, and he is going to send him in to be able to get into Absalom's inner circle. Hushai is going to pretend to switch sides, as it were, in order to be able to get information to David. And so David is going to have his informants that are going to be set up in Jerusalem. He's going to allow Absalom to come in so that he can then know exactly what is going on and not be playing from a hand that is completely in the dark. David is going to set everything up to be able to have the information that he needs to respond accordingly. David is not fleeing in terror. David is making a strategic decision that is meant to save the lives of his family and of those who are loyal to him, but also going to give him a means of being able to respond in the future. He's not going to sit back idly and wait for everything to happen. He is going to make sure that his options are open, that his information is strong, and that he has the ability to give the proper response when the time comes. You see here a very strategic side to David. David is not a fool, and David is not running scared. David is working very hard to make sure that when the time comes for him to respond to Absalom, he has the means and the wherewithal to do it. 
These are some of the things that I found in 2 Samuel chapter 15. I hope that they are things that are useful to you. And there's a lot more that we could talk about. There's a lot of intrigue. There's a lot of suspense. There's a lot of those kinds of things that are being built here in, in chapter 15. And there are a lot of lessons to be pulled from it. But these are some of the things that I wanted us to notice and that I wanted us to see that are lying in the passage, but kind of just under the surface of, of what it is that's going on in David's response. That it's possible to step back from a situation and yet not be running scared. You know, every time somebody leaves a particular situation, people want to accuse them of being a coward or of running away or things of that nature. There is also such a thing as a strategic withdrawal. And that's what David does here in 2 Samuel 15. Next time, we will come back and we will begin examining chapter 16, and we hope that you'll join us then. But until then, have a great day.